I'll record it. So Dataverse is a Microsoft product uh, using which um, we can store the data in cloud. Once you store it, you can share it with the appropriate users. Okay. And that is the key advantage of using a database. Look here. Uh, to access the database, you need to type make.powerapps.com in the URL. It will take you here. And here you need to go and create the username and password. Once you are done, look here. In my case, if I click on it here, it shows uh, my support at deepneuron.in, right? Okay, this is the username I used it. I, I created it. Fine. Next one is here. If you scroll down here, uh, okay, they have used different thing now. The, even the interface, they changed it. Now it's completely new one here. Even okay, what you do is go and search database, press enter. Start from look here, start from database, none. Okay, and here if you click on it. And I'm going to use this connection already, okay? And I'm going to say, okay, or else uh, I'm going to click on the new connection because you're all new onto this. I just click on the new connection. And here you can see the Microsoft uh, database and then create. I'm going to create a new uh, connection. So username and password, I need to use it. Hello, access. Look here, I created a new connection for this. And in this database, okay, we can see that uh, there are some pre-existing tables, other accounts, activities. This table, these tables were created by someone else, not by me. Connect, I selected it. This loading the table. Welcome to Power Studio. I am going to skip this one. And it is opened up this one. And here, let me just check. City, power and light, you know, search items. So these are the data that are available. You can see that here. And if you want to maximize it, you can maximize it by sliding this towards the right or left side. Okay. And, uh, okay, what I am going to do is uh, I am going to... Okay, best thing, I'll just go back here. Okay, sorry. Where is that? Database in the search engine, in the search button. Uh, let's do this. Start from database. And here, so these are the tables already created by someone else. Okay, we don't have to worry about these tables. Uh, what I am going to do is, I want to connect to this, you know, the database, uh, cloud database, via my Power BI desktop. How do I connect it? For that, you need to click on the settings icon here. You will find something called session details, click on it. And then here, the instance, you don't have to copy everything, just uh, the instance URL, okay, here, you need to copy only this server name. That's all. Okay. Don't copy the HTTPS and all. Okay. Right click on it, copy it, and go back here to your Power BI desktop. Here you can go to either get data to click on the database or the database is available here itself. I'm going to click on it here. Since in my case already I specified the server name, it directly connects to my database. You know, initially. When you try to connect database first time, it will ask you the server name, all the things. Once you specify, it is kind of, you know, get cached. Uh, it's called something like uh, cookies. You remember in SQL, sorry, in the browser, if you try something, once you log in, next time also you don't have to log in, it logins automatically, isn't it? Uh, something like a cookies. Now, uh, see, but in your case, what you need to do is, first time when you connect to database, it will ask you the instance uh, name, the server name. You just copy this one except by excluding the forward slash HTTPS and all. Okay, only this one is selected. 
and then uh, you go to your Power BI desktop, click on the database, it will ask you the uh, server name, that's all, the cloud server name, that's all. and then username, password, for that you need to connect uh, with this site, okay, and then uh, it will get connected automatically. Look here, the account table, we saw it, right, next to that I am going to select it, and display the account tables content here in the preview window. So hence, wait, when, wait till the preview uh, window get displayed. I'm going to hit OK load, sorry, hit load button. And then import mode. I'm going to use the import mode. Even in the case of direct database, we could see that import and uh, direct query mode is available, isn't it? Ten rows loaded. You see here on the right side, just beneath the data pane, you can see the account and click on the icon, expand it. And then you can see all the columns that belongs to this account table. Lot of columns are there. To see the data, you can click on the data view and then click on account. We have less number of data but more number of columns are there. Okay, let it be there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the pie chart. The data, account table data got loaded locally into my Power BI desktop from the Microsoft database. Now the next step is what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, Uh, account, uh, no, account, account name, I just drag and drop it here. Sorry, uh, yeah, account name, you need to drag and drop it. And then next one is um, number of, number of employees. Okay, I just drag and drop it here. You can see that the database table account got loaded locally into my Power BI desktop because I have used the import connected mode. And then with this uh, account table data, I have created a chart. So account name is something like, you know, each uh, department, each department, how many employees are working. That is what we can say. Next, what I do is I do the same thing, but this time I'm going to use the direct query mode. Okay, account table hit load. This time it will ask you, you want to, you know, import or direct query. The default one is import. We already tried the import. Now we are going to try with direct query mode. I'm going to hit okay. Only the metadata will get loaded whenever you connect it with the direct query mode. Account 2 is the direct query mode. The, this account already we, uh, you know, use the import mode. When you try to import the same table name, right, say same data with the same table name, it will put, uh, you know, 2. Inside the parent, it will put 2. So that you will get to know which one you imported first, which one you loaded second, second time. <laughs> So again, I'm going to create another visual, the pie chart, and this is the imported one. This is the direct query mode. In this case, account name, and then the number of employees. Number of employees, I just drop it here. Okay, this is direct query mode. This is your import mode, okay? So what uh, I'm going to do is, um, in the case of direct query mode, what will happen? This data will, you know, query directly from the, the dataverse. Whereas here, in this case, this data uh, took it from the account table, which got loaded locally. Okay. Import is local, right? This is still core, the, uh, the cloud. The data is not available locally. It is querying uh, the cloud 
cloud. Okay, I'm going to click on slicer. Here, what I do is I put the account name from this one. If I select anything, any specific account, for these four accounts, whatever I selected it, what happens is it goes and look here, this visual is still loading it, isn't it? It goes and query the, the Microsoft database cloud. And then the output of the uh, these four account it passed from the database cloud to your local Power BI desktop. Whereas in this case, I'm going to create another slicer. In this slicer, I'm going to use the account name. <clears throat> if I select the same thing here, city, tower, and uh, coho, look here, it is pretty fast, isn't it? So when you make uh, the selections, what are the selections that you make it? The appropriate values are populated or refreshed in this visual in a pretty fast manner because this data is available locally, whereas this data is not available locally. Okay, since the data is not available locally, there is a trade-off. If you want to download the entire data, and if the data volume is less, you can go ahead. If the data volume is too high, only option is use the direct query mode. So now you understood. We, we know with this demo, I have shown you uh, what is the difference between direct and uh, import uh, query mode in terms of performance also. The users, when you give the report to the end user, like, you know, he doesn't know what the ABCs of Power BI. All he knows is how to select the web. I want to see Contoso for coffee, Alpine. In this location, show me how many employees are working. That's all. All he, so when he whenever he makes any changes here, every time it goes and uh, query the cloud uh, database table, and then the output of the query will be sent back to your local Power BI desktop. Whereas in this case, if you use import mode, the entire data got loaded locally. Anything available locally, the the performance will be pretty fast. It's something like uh, you know, you have all these stocks are available in your warehouse. Like in Zepto, if you are ordering any product, they have multiple data warehouses. You you know almost all the locations they have the warehouses go down, and since the day the the products are already available in their go down, they go and pick up it quickly and then they deliver it in less than ten minutes or five minutes. Everything. If it is not there, what you need to do? You need to go and buy it from the shop. Right, uh, you need to find out which shop that product is selling it. Going and uh, searching and purchasing it takes time. The same philosophy is applicable here. If it is available locally, the speed will be faster. If it is in cloud, right, you need to it it will slow down. It will slow down the performance. But it's a trade off. That's what I said. If the volume of the data is very huge, direct query mode is still the winner. So with this example, you understood how to connect to database in both import and direct query mode.